but I want to make sure we get to this nugget here. When you say it has been sabotaged, what about this system has been sabotaged such that it does not does no longer work? We don't have the resources necessary, nor the investments been made to process people into the country in an orderly and humane way. Um, we have every time the administration tries opening a new humanitarian pathway, an activist Trump uh, appointed judge strikes it down. Um, the the la the the the, the uh, debt limit move that the Republicans are trying to force through Congress, that they force through the House of Representatives, would actually scale back investment in border patrol and other uh, border infrastructure. So time after time after time, we've both not invested in what we need to invest in, even at the border, and we certainly haven't been investing in supporting the communities that are in the United States that are welcoming migrants and in the region that are welcoming migrants. Billy, part of the reason I wanted to talk to you is because you have seen this issue both as an outside agitator and as an inside player. The ACLU is suing the Biden administration over new border restrictions put in place after the end of Title 42. The rule, as you know, it mimics a Trump-era policy requiring people crossing through another country on their way to the U.S. to seek asylum there first. What do you make of these restrictions from the Biden administration, Billy? Well, Alicia, the problem, like Dan said, is like, look, there are no easy solutions to something as complex as not just a broken immigration system, which is what we have, but the root causes and the reasons why people are coming uh, and being displaced from their countries in Latin America. And let's not forget that this isn't just a Western Hemisphere issue. This is a global issue. Everywhere else in the world, we're seeing um, displacement and migration in the ways that we're seeing in the Americas. Um, I think the Biden administration, look, is trying to get a job that is really hard to do uh, to get that done and to make sure that in, in whatever way possible that it is being done in an orderly manner and that it is being uh, done in a humane manner. Uh, the problem, like I said, is there are no fast or quick solutions. So, yeah, they're setting up processing centers uh, along the region to make sure that folks that are coming from Venezuela, from Nicaragua, from so many other places um, can uh, go to one of these processing centers in the region and look for legal pathways there to apply to come to the U.S. So that's key, and that is that these legal pathways have not existed, and the Biden administration is putting those in place, um, but it's going to take some time. And so I think we have to, we have to look at, uh, you know, as a region, the best way to be able to manage uh, this uh, to manage this going forward. And part of that is going to be working with our allies to make sure that in the same way that, as Dan said himself, that Venezuelans who are also staying in many other countries have the support that they need, um, that we also have ways to allow people to get here in a legal manner and uh, ways for them to be supported along along the journey. Dan, fully appreciating the complexity of this issue. I think the reason so many immigration advocates are concerned about what they will argue amounts to a transit ban on the part of the Biden administration is that it, there's what it means for migrants in real time. There's also what it means should a Republican win the next presidential election and find ourselves on a path toward changing and ending asylum in this country as we know it? Yeah, we unquestionably need to, we need a new asylum system. Um, the asylum system that we have doesn't work. Um, it has been overwhelmed in part because it's the only legal available mechanism to too many people trying to enter the United States. Um, and, and one of the kind of the ideas behind alternative pathways is to depressurize the, the, the asylum system. Um, we need an asylum system that lives up to our international obligations. We don't have that today. Um, but to get there is going to require cooperation. It's going to require, this is not something you can unilaterally impose. Um, the president can't do it alone. He needs Congress to work with him in a constructive manner. And unfortunately, what we see now is a Congress and Republicans in Congress who just want to use this for politics, who just want to use this to polarize, um, to divide us, uh, and want to benefit from kind of disorder and chaos rather than working the problem. This is a complex problem. It needs to be worked. We need a, a modern asylum system. We don't have that today. We didn't have it last week. We haven't had it for quite some time. Um, and yes, in the hands of nativists, um, our asylum system can and has been weaponized. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we need to fix it.